Hello students, so in the previous class we concluded up to Ronskian uh, to check the linear um, independence or linear dependence of uh, the solution of a second order ordinary, ordinary differential equation. Now imagine if you have um, an equation of n order of nth order, so then in that case you will end up getting n uh, solutions and whether they are dependent or not that can be also checked by using the Ronskian. But remember it is just a sufficient condition, it is not the necessary condition, right. So Ronskian helps, but it is not necessarily that uh, um, uh, it gives uh, the, the independent part of the functions. So we will see one or two counter examples where the functions uh, are linearly independent, but uh, uh, Ronskian is basically um, vanishing, right. So we will come to that. Okay. So now, uh, so uh, for uh, two functions, that means uh, we had uh, w of f1 and f2, we had uh, uh, f1, then f2, then f1 dash, f2 dash. Uh, if this is non-zero, then uh, we called, uh, then we called f1 and f2, then f1 and f2 are linearly uh, are linearly independent linearly independent this is just a sufficient condition right so that means if you have n functions uh, uh, or in other words we write it like this f1 f2 f3 up to fn so here we'll have uh, f1 f2 f3 up to fn then f1 dash, f2 dash, f3 dash up to fn dash. Similarly, it will keep on going. We will have f1 n minus 1 dotted up to fn n minus 1. If this is non-zero, then in that case, we will have then f1, f2, f3 up to fn are linearly independent, right? Linearly independent. So, this is uh, again just a uh, uh, sufficient condition. So, we can write uh, the non-vanishing, the non-vanishing, uh, the non-vanishing of the Ronskian, of the Ronskian, of the Ronskian on an interval, on an interval d. Uh, however, is a not a necessary condition, is not a necessary condition uh, of linear independence, of linear independence, independence. Why? Because let us take one example, uh, x square minus of x plus 1. Uh, x square minus 1 and 3 x square minus of x minus 1. So, if you check the let us call this as f1, f2 and f3 and if you check the Ronskian of f1, f2 and f3. So, this will simply become um, x square minus of x plus 1, x square minus 1 then 3 x square minus of x minus of 1 and uh, here um, if we do the first order derivative, then this will be 2 x minus 1, this will be 2 x, this will be 6 x minus 1, then we will have 2, 2 and 6. And uh, if we calculate the Ronskian, then it will be coming out to be non-zero, but they are dependent functions, but they are uh, dependent, dependent, dependent. Uh, we can see this right away uh, if uh, if we um, take like this can be seen right away. So x square minus of x plus one can be written as three x square minus of x and uh, minus of one uh, minus two times x square minus one. So this will become uh, x square minus of x plus 1, right. So, this function. So, we can take the coefficients as 1 and minus 2 and that can be uh, expressed as f1, right, whereas the Ronskian is non-zero. So, this is one such example where the Ronskian is coming out to be non-zero, but they are dependent functions and uh, similarly, we can take uh, 
another combination as uh, e to the power x, e to the power 2 x and e to the power 3 x. So, here uh, if you check the Ronskian of uh, f 1, f 2 and f 3. So, this will be uh, e to the power x, e to the power 2 x, e to the power 3 x. Then we will have e to the power x, 2 e to the power 2 x, 3 e to the power uh, 3 x, then e to the power x, 4 e to the power 2 x, then 9 e to the power 3 x. And uh, if we uh, determine the uh, uh, determine this determinant, uh, we will see that uh, this again leads to a contradiction, right. So, they are independent functions because you have e to the power x, e to the power 2 x and e to the power 3 x, but uh, while doing the simplification, we will uh, uh, see that. Uh, so, from here you can calculate e to the power x and uh, here we will have 18 e to the power 5 x minus 12 e to the power 5 x, then we will have e to the power 2 x then we will have 3 e to the power 4 x minus uh, uh, 9 e to the power 4 x and then we will have e to the power 3 x, then we will have 4 e to the power 3 x um, minus 2 e to the power uh, 3 x and this will become uh, 6. No? So, from here we will have 6 e to the power 6 x minus from here it will become minus of uh, 5 no? minus 5 um, uh, nee, minus 6 uh, e to the power uh, e to the power uh, 6 x plus uh, 2 e to the power 6 x. Uh, so, this will come out to be uh, 2 e to the power 6 x. So, this is uh, non zero. So, did I do correct calculation correctly? So, we have 18 then 12. So, 18 minus 12 then we have uh, 3 uh, minus 9 and then when we have e to the power 3 x. So, then this will be uh, e to the power 3 x then this will be 4 um, 4 minus 2. Right. So, this is becoming 2 e to the power 2 x right. So, uh, these are basically uh, the linearly independent functions. So, here in this case uh, Ronskian became non-zero and we got uh, linearly uh, independent function, but it may also happen that uh, Ronskian became uh, non-zero, but they are linearly dependent function which we saw in the previous case. So, it is not really very uh, necessary condition, but uh, it is sufficient condition right. Um, especially when you are checking the solution to be linearly dependent or independent. Okay. Now, um, how do we uh, find out this, uh, this uh, particular integral? So, uh, since we have let us say second order, third order or higher order, so we cannot keep writing d n by d x n and all that. So, we introduce an operator capital D. So, solution, uh, solution found by operational factor, operational factors. So, if the left hand side, uh, if, uh, if we denote, if we denote uh, capital D is equals to D D x capital D square is equals to D square by D x square dot dot and so on capital D n is equals to uh, D n by D x n right. Um, and if the uh, second order, so let us work with second order itself, second order uh, linear ordinary differential equation uh, y 2 plus p times y 1 plus q y is equals to capital X b put in the form as f d y equals to 0, then it is sometimes convenient convenient to factor 
to factor f d as f 2 d into f 1 d such that f 1 d operates upon y and then f 2 d and then f 2 d operates upon the result of this operation result of this operation. So, whatever we got after op operating f 1 d will charge f 2 d uh, on that one right. Um, and uh, this can be symbolically written as that means f d y can be written as f 2 d f 1 d y right or uh, we can also write f 2 d uh, f 1 d y all right. So, from the doing this factorization uh, we are basically um, uh, how to say uh, separating the operations. So, we are going one by one. So, suppose if you have d square minus uh, 2 d uh, d square minus uh, let us say 1. So, then in that case we will have d minus 1 and d plus 1. So, we will first charge d minus 1 by uh, we will charge d minus 1 on y then we will charge d uh, plus 1 on y uh, on the resulting operation that is d plus 1 of d minus 1 of y. So, kind of like that. So, you make a smaller factors so that it will be easier to deal with uh, factor by factor right. So, we will see one example what do we uh, actually mean by that. Um, so, let me take a function. So, homogeneous examples are easy. So, I am not doing homogeneous example, I want to do uh, or I want to solve for non homogeneous example. Okay. So, let us uh, proceed as below. Uh, so, solve uh, example 1. So, solve x d square y by d x square plus I sorry minus 2 x minus 1 into d y d x plus x minus 1 into y equals to 0. So, here this is not typically a uh, uh, second order ordinary differential equation with constant coefficient and uh, uh, non-zero right hand side. Here we have um, the coefficients as functions of x and y. So, this is a little different. So, here we have functions of x and y um, assume that x is non-zero and let us divide both sides by x. So, this will become d square y by d x square minus of 2 x minus 1 by x into d y d x plus uh, x minus 1 by x into y equals to 0 right. So, we have just uh, uh, simplified it a little bit we divided by x and uh, we obtained this. So, by uh, uh, so that uh, here here we have uh, capital P is equals to 2 x minus 1 into x and capital Q is equals to x minus 1 into x which is basically 1 minus 1 by x. So, here also I have 2 minus 1 by x right. So, these two. So, by inspection inspection um, we say that we say that e to the power x is a solution of the equation 1 that is this one. We say that e to the power x is a solution of equation 1 uh, since 1 plus capital P plus capital Q is equals to 0 here. How this condition leads to the uh, leads to the solution? If you remember when we had uh, d square y by d x square into capital P into d y d x plus capital Q into y is equals to 0. So, there we made a condition that uh, if uh, uh, 
um, this equation has two solutions uh, that means uh, that can be determined from y is equals to e to the power m x and uh, there uh, we had obtained an equation of this type capital P m into q is equals to 0 since e to the power m x was not equals to 0. So, hence from here we can say that uh, e to the power x will be a solution will be a solution if 1 plus p plus q is equals to 0. That means, by taking m is equals to 1, um, what we will get is 1 plus capital P plus capital Q is equals to 0. So, this tells us that whatever p and q that is given to us or by dividing whatever form we are putting into, e to the power x will always be a solution of that ODE uh, as long as we have 1 plus p plus q, this condition is satisfied. Right. Similarly, uh, the second condition is uh, e to the power minus x will be a solution if 1 minus p plus q is equals to 0 and uh, e to the power a x, e to the power a x will be a solution if we have 1 plus p by a plus q by a square equals to 0. Right. So, here we are saying that e to the power x is a solution because we can check uh, 1 plus p plus q. So, as you can see, uh, if you add uh, uh, 1 plus uh, p plus q, so if I am adding, then what will happen? Uh, we will get uh, uh, 1 plus uh, p plus q. Na? So, if I do uh, 1 plus p, that means 2 minus x, and uh, then we have uh, uh, or p is with negative sign sorry. So, then we have minus of 2 minus x and uh, we will have q that is 1 minus x. So, here I will have uh, 1 plus 1, so minus 2 is gone and then plus yeah. So, of course, it is satisfied. So, from here we can say that t to the power x is a solution. So, our capital P is with negative sign. So, sorry I did not write negative sign, but it is actually minus of 2 x minus 1. So, that is minus of 2 minus 1 by x. So, this, uh, this, is, this is satisfied. So, e to the power x is a solution. So, we know our u. So, if we know our u, you can write the solution, we can write the solution as y is equals to v u uh, be the complete solution. That means, uh, v into e to the power x will be the complete solution. So, now the complete solution, the complete solution is given by um, y is equals to u v which is e to the power x into v right and if uh, we calculate all the terms d y d x and d square y by d x square from here. So, then we will get d y d x is equals to v e to the power x plus e to the power x into d v d x and uh, d square y by d x square is uh, v e to the power x plus 2 e to the power x d v d x. Uh, plus uh, d square v by d x square into e to the power x. Right. Now, we will put everything uh, from d, uh, from this two relation that is d y d x and d square y by d x square into our original equation 1. So, then what will happen? If we put everything in that equation, uh, we will end up getting x into uh, d square v by d x square plus d v d x equals to 0. So, from here I can write uh, d d x of x d v d x equals to 0. We can integrate both sides. If we integrate it will become x d v d x equals to some fun, uh, some constant arbitrary constant. Let us call it as c 1 where c 1 is an arbitrary constant is an arbitrary constant. Now, we can uh, integrate uh, further and therefore, we will get v x equals to um, c 1 log of x plus c 2, where c 2 is also an arbitrary constant. Therefore, the required the required complete solution complete solution is uh, y x equals to u uh, v. Right? So, u is what e to the power x and v is what c 1 log of x plus c 2. So, this is uh, c 1 e to the power x log x plus uh, c 2 e to the power 
x and this is the required solution. So, this is the method that we covered in the previous class at the beginning of the lecture. Using that we can be able to determine the solution, right. Um, one good thing about uh, this method is that uh, if you know the one of the integrals, if we know the one of the integrals, it is easy to determine the other one. The thing is this method works well when you have a second order ODE, because for second order ODE we know the combination of P and Q. If you have a third order ODE, then in that case, um, of course, our uh, equation, uh, the auxiliary equation will be m q plus m p square, uh, m square p plus m q plus r equals to 0. Uh, now, now, from there, uh, when we are um, actually writing uh, the solution that e to the power x will be a solution, so then it will be uh, 1 plus p plus q plus r uh, must be equal to 0. So, something like that kind of combination we can make out. So, this technique will actually be useful for uh, higher order ODs also. But here we are limiting ourselves to uh, second order ODs. Look into one more example before we move on to the next topic. So, suppose we have uh, uh, example 2. So, we have 1 minus x square d square y by dx square plus x dy dx uh, minus of y is equals to x times uh, 1 minus x square 3 by 2 in terms of uh, known integrals, in terms of known integral solve, we can write solve. Right. So, again here the technique is same, we will divide by 1 minus x square. So, this will become y 2 or y double dash x by 1 minus x square y 1 minus of y by 1 minus x square, here we will have x uh, 1 minus x square whole to the power half, right. So, what do we have? Our p is x by 1 minus x square and q is minus of 1 by 1 minus x square, ok. And uh, p plus q x is equals to 0. So, Thus, y is equals to x is the part of the complementary function, part of the complementary function. Now, for complete solution for y is equals to uh, x is the um, part of the complementary complementary function. Uh, now, for a complete solution for a complete solution, we will have or we have y is equals to uh, v x. So, from here we can solve uh, d y d x is equals to v plus x into d v d x and similarly d square y by d x square is equals to d v d x plus uh, um, x into d square v by dx, dv, dx square plus um, dv dx. So, that means, uh, we will basically have x into d square v by dx square plus 2 dv dx, right. All right. Now, when we put all these values back into the equation, so then our equation, then the given equation, then the given equation reduces to reduces to uh, d square v by d x square uh, plus 2 by x plus x by 1 minus x square into d v d x equals to 1 minus x square whole to the power half. Now, we will substitute d v d x equals to p, then it will become a first order ODE and for first order ODE we can write down the integrating factor, from integrating factor we can write down the solution uh, in terms of uh, p, but p is our uh, dv dx. So, again you have to integrate once. So, that means there will be two successive integrations. So, here uh, substituting p, substituting p for dv dx, uh, we get 
dp dx plus 2 by x x by 1 minus x square uh, p is equals to 1 minus x square uh, whole to the power half not 3 by 2 half sorry. And uh, this is uh, a linear equation whose integrating factor will be uh, you can just write down the integrating factor from here and uh, then we multiply by integrating factor. So, this is uh, a linear equation of first order linear equation of first order first order whose integrating factor is x square by square root of 1 minus x square. And uh, if we multiply by this, then in that case uh, the solution the solution of p equation that means uh, the last equation will be um, p into x square by square root of 1 minus x square equals to 1 by 3 x cube plus c. And from here we can write d p d x uh, sorry d v d x equals to uh, 1 by 3. Uh, then we have uh, x square root of 1 minus x square plus c by x square uh, into square root of 1 minus x square. Now, we will integrate again. So, this will be v x on the left hand side on the right hand side it will be 1 by 3 x square root of 1 minus x square plus c uh, square root of 1 minus x square by x square and uh, plus some constant d. Right. So, this is the required v. So, now the solution will be u into v. So, then let us go to the next page. The complete solution, the complete solution or integral is y is equals to v into x. So, v we have already defined or determined that is from the previous calculation times x. So, that will be and of course, uh, what are the constants c and d are the arbitrary constants c uh, and d are arbitrary constants. Right. So, here we have uh, uh, given the solution uh, of uh, the give, uh, of the problem second problem that we have just uh, written and uh, yeah this is the required solution um, another thing that uh, i wanted to tell you that uh, the part where we had uh, y is equals to vx um, when we assume that the solution is uh, y is equals to e to the power mx right so from there we realize that e to the power x will be a solution when we have uh, 1 plus p plus q and so on now, if we assume the solution of the type uh, x to the power m, so we can also have uh, x to the power y is equal to x to the power m as the trial solution. And then you do the second order derivative, you put it back into the equation and uh, our auxiliary equation will look something like this m into m minus 1 uh, p plus p m x plus uh, q x square equals to 0. right? And uh, when we put uh, our uh, m is equals to let us say 1. So, then in that case this part will be gone uh, m into m minus 1 and then we will have y is equals to x p x plus q. right? So, in our case for this problem where is that? Uh, for this problem yes for this problem um, we uh, our p is uh, x by 1 minus x square plus q is uh, minus of 1 by 1 minus x square. So, if I multiply by x, if you add them, it is becoming 0. And uh, if you go back to this criteria, if you take p is equals to um, m and uh, uh, if you take p is equals to m, so then in that case, uh, our condition will be uh, p plus q x sorry, p plus uh, q x and uh, p plus q x. So, that actually gives us um, uh, p plus q x and that will actually give us that y is equals to x is the solution. Similarly, if I put uh, m is equals to 2, then in that case this will become 2 plus 2 p x uh, plus q x square equals to uh, 0. So, here uh, we can see uh, that uh, 
y is equals to x. Achha, we can also exchange the roles. So, if I put m is equals to 1, so then this is p x plus q and in our previous calculation uh, instead of uh, uh, capital P, we can call just q and p. So, we can just change the position of q and p and uh, we can still get y is equals to x as the uh, trial solution. But you got the idea that uh, either you can assume uh, e to the power m x as the trial solution from there for m equals to 1, we got 3 conditions or 2 conditions um, uh, to write down the solution or write down the condition 1 plus p plus q and so on. And otherwise, we can assume uh, y is equals to x to the power m as the trial solution and uh, then you obtain the auxiliary equation. In auxiliary equation, if you put m equals to 1, uh, then y is equals to x will be the solution uh, under certain conditions. So, y p plus q x equals to 0 or if you put m equals to 2, then it will become uh, um, 2 plus 2 p x plus q x square equals to 0. So, from here we will get p x plus q x square, x is out. So, we will got we got p plus q x equals to 0. So, like this um, either y is e to the power m x or x to the power m, you start with that and for m equals to 1, what will be the solution, uh, what will be the condition for uh, that uh, complementary for that integral to be the solution and then you determine the other half that means the v by taking the product y is equals to u v and uh, rest of the calculation is analogous. Um, let me just show you. So, it is just uh, getting a second order o d of this type. So, from there we integrated, uh, where is that? Uh, yeah, from there we uh, did some, uh, we substituted p for dv dx, then we integrated the first order od, then we again integrated the first order od, we got our v, and then you multiply by u, and that gives you a required solution, right? So, this is the way um, we can solve these. Um, ordinary differential equation of uh, constant coefficient is very easy of uh, variable coefficients, right. Um, we uh, still um, uh, like to cover uh, some other um, uh, aspects of it. So, suppose if you have third order and fourth order OD, then how we can proceed. So, that we will do in the next class, right. So, we will continue this discussion and uh, we will cover some more examples, some more topic on higher order uh, ordinary differential equation in our um, upcoming classes. So, thank you for your attention.